Well, good morning everyone again. We'll have another go. Um, it's so good to be with you and uh, pray that God will richly bless his word to our hearts as we look at this whole subject of prophecy and Jesus being the prophet and we are seeking to follow him. So it's all about discipleship and uh, particularly relating to Jesus, our great prophet. So here we go, let's pray. Lord, as we look at this wonderful subject, we pray that you'll open our hearts to see its application to our lives and that you'll bless us as we hear your word. We ask it for Jesus' sake. Amen. Well, I want to begin with uh, three stories, three short stories. And the first one relates to myself. When I was about 19 years old, a long time ago, I was living in London. I'd just become a Christian and I was worshipping at a church in uh, northwest London. And we had a wedding at the church. And uh, afterwards we had the reception in the church hall. And I was sat opposite to uh, Marion, Marion, the minister's wife, well, sorry, the minister's daughter. And we were chatting and then she said to me, Ron, I've been wanting to tell you, you ought to be a teacher. Well, I didn't think much of it at the time. But uh, that's the first story. And then the second story relates to many, many years later, decades later. There was an evening service at St Martin's Church. It was Eden Song, and I was leading it. And uh, we had uh, the normal service and very traditional with the choir, robed. And as I, after I preached, one of our elderly members of the congregation, one of our regulars, came up to me and he said, he said, Ron, God has really spoken to me this evening and shown me things about our church. And uh, can I share it with the rest of the church during the service? And I said, of course you can. So after we'd finished singing the hymn, he told us what God had said to him. And the third story was uh, very recently, a few days ago, in fact, I was talking to my granddaughter, Sophie, who we love dearly, who lives in Cambridge. And she's been going through quite a difficult time. And she said, I've had this text from a friend. We were talking about prophecy and about this service today. And uh, she said, I've had this text, Grandad. So she sent it to me and this is what it said. Hey, Sophie, I've been thinking of you a lot this week. I've been reading through Habakkuk and was struck today by a part in Habakkuk 3 where it highlighted that God didn't remove the water from the Israelites when they were fleeing but did make a way through it for them, parting it. I feel like God would want you to know that he will make a way through it for you too. So much love to you, my dear friend. So let's step back into the Bible. In fact, as far as I can see, you could say that the whole Bible is really a prophecy from beginning to end. Genesis to Revelation is all about prophecy and what's going to happen and what is happening and what God is saying to the world that he made. It's full of prophecy. Some people say that uh, the Old Testament is the law and the prophets. But in fact, when you look carefully at the law, the five first books of the Bible, the books of Moses, it's full of prophecy. Abraham was a prophet. I checked it out. Abraham was a prophet. Moses was perhaps one of the greatest prophets of the Old Testament. And he, of course, uh, was uh, told that he had influence over those first five books. The first five books are the books of Moses. The law itself was sort of a pointing forward. Paul says it was our teacher, our schoolmaster, leading us to Christ. That too was a prophecy. And then you get the great stars that we all know. Samuel, Elijah, Elisha, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Daniel, Ezekiel, what a strange prophet he was, Ezekiel. And then we've got these prophets with the books leading up to the New Testament. We've got people like Hosea and Amos and Joel and Jonah and so on, Micah and uh, all leading up to the New Testament where John the Baptist was the final of these uh, pre-Christian prophets. Uh, Jesus said of John the Baptist, of course, he was the greatest. No one was greater than ever. 
for ever than John the Baptist. No person ever born has been greater than John the Baptist. And there were so many others, of course, in the Old Testament, people we don't know anything about. There were schools of prophets learning to be prophets. And uh, they were just like us, ordinary people, people from different backgrounds, people with different gifts, people living at different times and situations and circumstances. But they had all one thing in common. They spoke God's word. They spoke God's word. That's what a prophet is, someone who speaks the word of God, who speaks a word from God. Which leads us on, of course, to the greatest prophet who's ever lived, our Lord Jesus Christ, our great prophet, priest and king. After Jesus had been baptised and anointed with the Spirit and taken into the wilderness and tempted and tested, it says he came into Galilee preaching, preaching, the kingdom of God is near, repent and believe the good news. Jesus came as a preacher and a teacher. He taught about the kingdom of God. He taught in parables and stories. He taught individuals, he taught groups. He taught on the mountainside, he taught in the cities, he taught in the towns and the villages. He was a wonderful prophet, he spoke the word of God. But the big difference between Jesus and all the other prophets was this. He was directing people to himself. Come to me, all you who are labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come to me if you're hungry, and I will give you the bread of life. Come to me if you're thirsty, and I will give you the water of life. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he were dead, he shall live. And those who live and believe in me will never die. He was an amazing, amazing prophet. I am the true vine. I am the good shepherd. I am the door into the kingdom of God. Everything about Jesus spoke of God. He was the word of God incarnate. I love the story of the uh, Samaritan woman at the well talking to Jesus. And after they'd been talking for a while and Jesus had told her things about herself, she said, I, oh, sir, I perceive you're a prophet. And she said, well, Moses said that when Messiah comes, he will tell us everything. And Jesus said to her, the one who's speaking to you is he. And off she goes into the village, I found the Messiah, I found the Messiah, he's told me everything about myself. And they all come running and they come to find him. And uh, they say, stay with us. And Jesus stays in their village. And many of them say afterwards, we believe in him, not just because of what you told us, but because we've seen for ourselves. And we now, we're following Jesus. We're disciples of this great prophet. What does it mean for us today is the question. What does it mean for us today? to be disciples of this great prophet, Jesus. Well, let me remind you of Pentecost. In a couple of weeks time, we'll be celebrating that great festival of the church, Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit was poured out upon the waiting disciples. And uh, they all started speaking in languages that everyone could understand, and they all came running, the crowds came running. What's going on, what's going on? And Peter stood up and he said, Joel's prophecy is coming true today. In these last days, God is pouring out his spirit. There was an explosion of prophecy. Sons and daughters will prophesy. Old men will dream dreams, young men will see visions, but prophecy will be the great thing. Some Christians believe that, of course, when the canon of scripture was completed, prophecy ceased. There's no sign of that in scripture at all in fact it's the exact opposite in the spirit the age of the spirit prophecy multiplies i love that story when joshua came to moses and he said moses there are two men prophesying down in the camp stop them and moses says to joshua why would i do that would that all the lord's people were prophets would that all the lord's people were prophets that's the spirit of paul 
when he's writing, and we should, as we shall see in a minute. Everybody actively speaking the word of God in our generation, in our church. How wonderful. <clears throat> Which leads me, of course, to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1, part of our reading today. Here's your challenge for the week. Follow the way of love. Eagerly desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. Follow the way of love. Eagerly desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. That's your challenge. Learn the verse. Put it into practice. The services in Corinth were pretty chaotic in Paul's absence. Groups had grown up, following different people. Factions had grown up. There were spiritual gift differences. People were saying, our gift's more important than yours. And the more spectacular the gift, the more prominence it was given. And for that reason, Paul wrote 1 Corinthians 13 about the way of love. Read it in the context of spiritual gifts and you'll understand the passage so much better. And Paul says right at the end of chapter 14, let everything be done decently and in order. The word is attractively so that people will enjoy it and want to be there. It's, let it be unifying. Let there be something lovely about it. Don't all speak at once. And they weren't meeting in great church buildings where if somebody stood up to speak, you couldn't hear them. They were more in homes or in halls. And Paul says, you can all take a turn. Uh, you can all prophesy. No more than three in a service, of course. But again, many opportunities to prophesy and speak to others. And the key verse is really verse three. You then get the idea of what Paul is really talking about here when he's talking about prophecy. He says it's for strengthening faith. It's for edifying, building up, establishing. It's for growing and maturing as Christians. When somebody speaks a word from God, it's to do the person good or the people good when they hear it. It's for encouragement. Oh, the gift of encouragement is so wonderful. It's so positive. It's a great gift. And when people prophesy, speak God's word to the church and to individuals, it's to encourage them. Keep going. Go on. Don't give up. And thirdly, Paul says it's for comforting. It's like the Holy Spirit, the comforter, who draws alongside and walks with us. That word is to do that. It's to encourage and comfort, strengthen, lead us on. We're not alone. God is with us. Eagerly desire spiritual gifts, says Paul, but rather that you might prophesy. For me, that word from Marian changed the whole course of my life. You ought to be a teacher. I explored it. I prayed about it. I asked questions about it. I went to see different schools and talked to different teachers. I, opened, I pushed doors and they opened for training. And uh, the whole course of my life became one of teaching in the church and in schools. And that uh, Sunday evening service, that even song service, when that dear man said, can I tell the church what God has revealed to me? He did. And I have to say that every word he spoke that night came true. It was a true prophecy. And Sophie... I feel that God is telling you this. He's not going to take away the water. He's not going to take away the problems, but he will make a way through. He will part the way and make a way through for you. And what a blessing it was to her heart and how it changed her when she'd been so depressed. Do you know, one of the positives of lockdown has been the explosion of things on the internet. The messages, the texts, the prayers, the services, the preaching. There's been an explosion of prophecy for those who were there to see it. Strengthening, encouraging, comforting. Of course, there'll be some who are known as prophets who prophesy regularly. But there's the occasional prophet, the word that's been given 
And we can all do it, says Paul. You don't have to be a great preacher. You're not called to preach or teach their particular gifts, but to speak a word for him in a situation. We're all able to do that when we're tuned into God and speak his word. Just a word of caution, of course. Watch out for false prophets, said Jesus, and be many of those leading many astray. We're not creating scripture when we prophesy. Scripture tests everything that we say, and we're to be well aware that we can be led astray. Test everything, says the Apostle Paul. Hold on to what's good. Be watchful. Test everything by the gospel, by Jesus himself. Bring it to scripture. Everything we do when we prophesy and speak his word, we're adorning the gospel. We're celebrating the gospel. We are in some way expounding the gospel to others. And finally, this morning, perhaps this is the most important thing of all. I was in conversation with uh, a 15 year old recently, and we were talking about what lockdown has done for her schooling. She's got GCSEs next year. And she said, well, actually, I'm quite enjoying it because I can work at my own pace and no distractions. She said, but um, I said, well, what are you doing? She, she, she said, well, we're actually doing Shakespeare as part of the English course. And uh, I quite enjoy Henry V because I've seen it on film. But, oh, she said, I hate having to read Macbeth. I said, why is that? She said, and this is the crucial bit. She said, Shakespeare was never meant to be read. It was meant to be watched. It was meant to be seen. And a tiny light bulb went on, ding, in my mind. And I said to myself, that's exactly what prophecy is. That's exactly what prophets are. They have a message that's got to be seen and not just heard. The prophet is their own visual aid. They're to live the message. They're to embody the message. And that's where, of course, Jesus comes in. He's the perfect example. It's especially true of him. You've seen me, said Jesus. You've seen the Father. We saw his glory, says John. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And Paul says, the things you've seen in me, seen in me, go and do them too. But Jesus was his message. He was the crucified saviour. And when he said, and when I'm hanging up there to die, I will draw people to myself. Everything about Jesus spoke his message. The kingdom of God is near, said Jesus. Yes, because the king had come. He was the message itself. He was God incarnate. When people saw him, they could see God. Have I been so long with you, Philip, and have you not known me? When Philip said, show me the Father, show us the Father. Have I been so long with you, Philip, and you haven't known me? See me, watch me. Prophecy is to be seen, to be watched. So for ourselves, this is so important. Try to be more like Jesus. This was Steve's message last week. Jesus, the sinless one. Get rid of all the things that spoil your life. Sort them out, be radical, be ruthless with the things that are spoiling your life. Let your life be a light. Let your life be a witness, seen and read by everybody, says the Apostle Paul. It's not, it is just as important to be the truth as to tell the truth. I love that. It's just as important to be the truth as to tell the truth. I was watching Songs of Praise the other Sunday and there was a song It said, let us build a house where prophets speak. And that's my message today. Let us build a house where prophets speak, where we all speak the word of God to each other and to others. May the word of God multiply in our town, in our community, in our families, in our homes, amongst our neighbours, amongst our friends. That's the aim. Oh, let's
let it be so. Let us pray. O oh Lord Jesus, my shepherd, brother, friend, my prophet, priest and king, my Lord, my life, my way, my end, accept the praise I bring. Lord, write your word on our hearts today and help us to speak your word in our own way, in different situations, to help others to come to know you. Help us to be encouragers. Help us to be those who strengthen and build up. Help us to be those who comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. God bless you. I'm sorry it didn't work out this morning, but I hope you got something from this just now. God bless you.